testing, one, two, testing, one, two, test, test. Well, good morning, and welcome to worship here on the fifth Sunday of Easter, and also our graduation uh, senior recognition Sunday, as well as a first communion. So we got lots of things going on today. Um, so glad that you're all here to join us uh, for this day. Uh, a reminder that after worship today, there will be a potluck. Um, please join us downstairs, even if you didn't bring anything. We hope that you'll join us for a time of celebration with our graduates. Uh, today. And tonight at 7 p.m. there is uh, baccalaureate at Bruton Community Church. Um, so we hope you will join us there as well. Um, I think that is all the announcements we have today. Is there anything that anyone would like to add? Nope. All right. Please stand as you are able as we begin worship today. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, 
by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirits of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Our, our witness to your resurrection, strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is number 380, Hallelujah, Jesus Lives. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us sing our hymn of praise, Shout to the Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first scripture reading comes from Acts 7, 55 through 60. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gave, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus standed on the right hand of the go right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout and rushed together against him. They drank. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to began to stone him, and the witnesses laid their coats at his feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and carried out a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When, we, when he had said this, he died. The word of God were life. Response of Psalm reading, Psalm 31, 1 through 5, and 15 through 16. In you, O Lord, have I, given, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Be strong, rock, at a castle to keep me safe, for you are my craig and my stronghold for the sake of your name lead me and guide me into your hands i command my spirit for you have redeemed me o lord of my truth Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. The second scripture reading is from 1 Peter 2, 2 through 10. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk so that by in, your, by, that by in you may grow into salvation. If needed, you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone through rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be in a holy priesthood and offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For he stands in scripture, see I am the living, lying in Zion, a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame to you and then who believe he is rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock and makes them fall they stumble because they disobey the word as they were to send to do but you are not chosen a race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God own God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you in, out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Once you, once you are not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Word of God, word of life. Do we have a children's sermon? Madeline, you want to come up? It's up to you. Oh, and Aiken. Yeah, you can't forget about Aiken, right? <laughs> All right. So we have a short story for today. Cool boots. All right. So uh, today our scripture is about Jesus He's telling the disciples a story, or he's telling them, rather, something right before he's going to die. So it's like the night before he's going to die. 
And uh, so he's trying to assure, kind of trying to help his disciples know that, that he's going to be with them even after he dies. So he's kind of preparing them for this day that's going to come up that's really bad, right? When Jesus dies on the cross. But he's trying to tell them, but they don't know that something's going to happen, right? So, but he's reminding them that no matter what, no matter what happens in life, that God will continue to be with them. So, here's our story. It's only one page long. It says, Jesus taught his disciples many things. Don't be sad or worried, he said. Believe in God and in me. God's house in heaven is so big that everyone can have a room. I'm going there to get your rooms ready. Later, I'll come back to take you to God's house. You know the way to where I'm going. Thomas and Philip, so they were disciples, they looked really confused, and they asked Jesus, they said, what way do you mean? And Jesus said to them these words, he said, I, I'm the way to know God. Because you know me, you know God too. I've taught you about life with God and the good things God wants you to do. Pray, ask me for anything, and I'll help you do it. The two disciples, Thomas and Philip, they smiled, and they said, we can follow you and do what you ask us to do. You are the way to heaven, and we can live in God's house too. So it's just a reminder that no matter where we go, no matter what we do in life, that God is with us. And so today we are celebrating seniors in high school. Can you imagine being a senior in high school? No, it's a long ways away, isn't it? Not as far for Aiken, though, right? But uh, yeah, so it's that's we're celebrating Emmett and Annika and Ethan today as they are graduating from high school. And it's just as they're moving on, but it's a reminder to them and to you and to all of the people here today that no matter where we go, no matter where we find ourselves, that God will always be with us. Can you pray with me? Yeah. Good and gracious God, Lord, I give you thanks for Madeline and for Aiken and for all the children from Big Grove. And Lord, we just ask that you bless uh, them as they leave here today. And Lord, we give thanks that we can always trust that no matter where we go, no matter what we do, that God will be with us always. And we give you thanks for that gift. Amen. All right. You can go back to your seats. I invite the congregation to stand as we sing our gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to the book of John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also and you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to Philip, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does this work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. 
But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This scripture that I just read is one that we often hear at funerals. It has those familiar statements that we've heard, do not let your hearts be troubled, or in my father's house there are many rooms, or I am the way and the truth and the life. These are words that provide comfort in times of death, the thought that God will be with their loved one who has just died. And it's true, Jesus does give promises in this gospel text. But on this day, we're thankful that it is not a funeral, but we are celebrating our graduates and they're going off to new adventures in their lives. If we take a look at this scripture, it's important that context, if we think about the context of where this scripture happens, context is always what matters when reading scriptures, and this scripture is no different. So even though today is the fifth Sunday of Easter, meaning the fifth Sunday after the resurrection, we hear a scripture from the day before Jesus would die on the cross. These disciples, they're gathered together. If you can imagine the Last Supper, right, where they're gathered at that table, they're having dinner together, they're celebrating Passover, and they don't know that something horrible is going to happen tomorrow. But Jesus is trying to prepare them. Jesus is trying to tell them exactly that. He's trying to prepare his disciples just like he's been doing for the last three years. Jesus is trying to prepare his disciples for the horrible thing that will happen the next day. As if there ever could be preparation for such an event. Nevertheless, Jesus tells the disciples that he is going somewhere that they cannot go. Of course, the disciples do not understand and they don't want to be without Jesus. Who would? This conversation continues beyond our scripture for today in, in verses 15 and beyond. And it goes into next week's gospel scripture. But let me give you a bit of a spoiler alert. Jesus promises the disciples in the verses that follow our text today that they will never be alone. That the Father, meaning God, will give the people of God another advocate. That even though Jesus will no longer walk this world in the flesh, God will not leave God's people alone. Jesus tells the disciples, do not fear, because this advocate will be coming after he is gone. So what is this advocate that Jesus is speaking of? Well, this advocate is the Holy Spirit. Jesus will ascend to heaven on the 40th day after the resurrection, and on the 50th day, that is when God will send the Holy Spirit to be with God's people forever and ever. This is something we've been talking about in 7th and 8th grade confirmation recently. We've been talking about the Holy Spirit. And it's a hard thing, I think, to grasp. Probably even hard for uh, adults to grasp. But as we learned, there are many names for the Holy Spirit. There are many representations of the Holy Spirit. And some of the names that are for the Holy Spirit are words such as advocate, which I talked about a little bit before, comforter, helper, counselor. The Holy Spirit is God with you. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God who accompanies us in our daily lives, who guides us and leads us. In the original Greek language, Holy Spirit is translated as paraclete. Paraclete means to come alongside, you know, like an advocate or a comforter or a helper or a counselor. This is a wonderful way to describe the work of the Spirit as something that comes alongside of you to guide you, to strengthen you, to encourage you, to teach you and to lead you. An advocate is truly someone or something that is looking out for you 
that has your back. And that is the Spirit. That is the Holy Spirit. With this Spirit and Advocate in our lives, we are then given freedom. Freedom to grow, to become new creations in Christ, to drop the things in our lives that are weighing us down, that are not producing fruit, and to move forward as new people. Graduates, as you are moving on to a new chapter in your lives, let us remember that you can lay down all the things that are not producing fruit. As you go off to join the workforce or pursue more education, join the service, through this scripture text for today, you are promised that God will go with you wherever you go through the work of the Holy Spirit. So although this is a popular scripture to read at a funeral, it's also a scripture that gives promises of God's presence to be with you no matter where you find yourself. In college, at work, maybe a little of both. Because when God promises something, it is there forever. It cannot be undone. Nothing you can do will make this promise go away. And that's a gift that God has given us. Because as humans, we will do things wrong. We will make mistakes and we will go astray. But God will not go astray. God will always be there with you to love you and guide you, to put people in your life to lead you in on the right path. So graduates, as you move into a new chapter of your lives, I hope you will take with you the lessons of faith that you learned here at Big Grove Lutheran Church. And I also hope that you remember that no matter where life takes you, the people of faith here at Big Grove Lutheran Church will be rooting for you and praying for you. God is with you through the work of the Holy Spirit. God is with you through the Holy Spirit, advocating for you, loving you, and walking alongside of you as you journey onward in life. May God's greatest blessings be with you all. Amen. We'll now sing our hymn of the day, Cornerstone. I invite you to stand as you are able as we confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of life, strengthen your church to proclaim your gospel even in times of trouble. As we remember Stephen, we give thanks for diagonal ministry. Bless all deacons and strengthen them for their bridge building ministry between church and the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, you show your steadfast love through mighty waters, towering mountains, verdant fields, and arid deserts. Protect the Earth's diverse habitats from the forces of pollution, erosion, and global warming. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Mighty God, your spirit guides us into all truth. Give wisdom to the world and local leaders and organizations as they begin, build, or renew relationships. Strengthen leaders and aid organizations in areas needing to be rebuilt following conflicts, unrest, or natural disaster. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you make your home among us. Abide with refugees, those experiencing homelessness, those fleeing war and poverty, and all who question if there is a home in your heart. We also pray for all who are sick or in need of prayer on this day. We lift up to you those who are on our prayer list. Ben, Wade and Jordan Jacobson and Baby, Deese, Dorothy, Teresa, Calman, Jack, Arlen, Violet, Reynold, Pearl, Cindy, Janelle, Chris, Don, Gail, Richard, Richard, Janet, our Catholic brothers and sisters, and all those that we now name in our hearts, having the confidence that through the power of the Holy Spirit, God knows our needs. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Assuring God you accompany your people amid uncertainty and change. Uphold people in this community who have recently moved, changed jobs or schools, retired, or are going through transitions of any kind. Lord, we lift up to you our graduates of Annika and Emmett and Ethan. Lord, bless them in their transitions. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Renewing God, you gather the saints at your heavenly banquet. We give you thanks for the care shown us by those who have gone before us. Grant confidence and comfort for all awaiting the place that you have prepared for them. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We'll now have a time where we are going to bless our graduates. So graduates, I will invite you to come forward as I read your name. And uh, I'm asking you to list your name, your future plans, and one fond or good memory that you have of Big Grove. So on the cuff, you're gonna do this, right? This is, this is adulthood, right? So your name, your future uh, thing that you're gonna be doing, and then also something fun that you remember about being here at Big Grove. So life presents us with various significant milestones. Graduation from high school is one of these milestones. So today we wish to honor those who are moving through this special time of accomplishment, transition and change, 
and to show them that we as their community of faith stand with them and support them as fellow believers in Christ. Graduates, as I say your name, please come forward. As you wrap yourself in these quilts that are given by Jenny and Shannon and created by members of Big Grove, may you always remember first and foremost of God's great love for you. And may these quilts also remind you of Big Grove's love for you and that, will always ha and that you will always have a home here. So we invite Annika to come forward. She's going to talk first. So. We didn't do it right over here. Um, your name, your future plans, and something you remember about Big Grove. Hi, I'm Annika. Um, next year I will be going to Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University to study aerospace engineering. And potlucks are pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> potlucks are the best, yes. Congratulations to you. We invite Emmett to come forward. You can just stand here, yep. Hi, I'm Emmett. Um, I'm going to college with Dina next year to become a lineman, and my favorite memories are probably the Christmas programs. Nice. Congratulations to you, Emmett. And finally, we invite Ethan to come forward. Hey everybody, I'm Ethan. I'm going to NDSES in Wahpeton to study animal sciences and play football. And my favorite memory is probably Veggie Tales in Sunday school. <laughs> Veggie Tales. All right, so we want to get a picture of you three together. So. And next, I want to invite the parents to come forward as we will be blessing uh, your child. So if you can come forward and place a hand on them as we will be blessing them. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for Annika and Emmett and Ethan. And we pray blessings upon them as they move on to their next great adventure. Protect them and guide them on this next journey of life. Help them to remember of your great love for them and that nothing can ever separate them from the love of God. Bless also the parents of these students who have raised their children and nourished them with love and faith. Finally, Lord, may these students forever know that wherever they go and whatever they do, they're going forward with prayers and love from this congregation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause. We'll now have a time of peace, so may the peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. And you may go out and uh, greet everyone.
Please stand as we sing our offertory hymn, Now Thank We All Our God. God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> night in which he's betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread he gave thanks he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me again after supper Jesus took the cup he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me for as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray together with the words that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see the table is set. All is ready. Come and eat. You may be seated. Today we are celebrating a first communion. And so Aiken Spanier will be receiving his first communion. So I invite all of the Spaniards and their family to come forward to receive communion first today.
Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Now receive this blessing. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Our sending hymn this morning is number 543, Go My Children with My Blessing. Go in peace, serve the risen one. Thanks be to God.